Bernstein family has recognized a household noble who favors books over everything else. Iana Bernstein, daughter of the Baron of the Silurian Kingdom, is no different, but instead of being called a bookworm, she is known as the Bibliophila Princess. Four years ago, the Crown Prince Christopher Astronaut offered Ophelia a special arrangement. If she would become his fiancée, he would promise that she would continue spending all her free time reading. Despite having inherited a title of great responsibility, she agreed to the proposal, enticed by the prospect of gaining access to the royal archives, housing a wide selection of books. But to this day, Eliana firmly believes that her engagement is a void of romance semantics. When she has Christopher interacting with another girl, she presumes that the day she spends with him will soon reach an end. Yet, during the period of uncertainty, Elena and her Christopher open up a new chapter in their relationship, gradually uncovering the genuine feelings that they grow to better understand each other. This anime has about 12 episodes from October 6 to December 2022. Based off a light novel, it's drama, fantasy, romance, demographic, show side. Each episode is 20 minutes and is rated PG-13. Let's get started into the review. Welcome back to another anime review. And we are back with my favorite anime because all my lovely bookworms out there but love this anime. As we have the uh, Bible Philia Princess where we have a loving bookwoman girl who wants to spend her free time reading and since her family is well known for spending time over bookstores and anything else, I think this is the perfect anime for us. Finally, a bookworm romance that I've been waiting for. Um, like a bunch of descendants of a bookworm, it's vastly different. Instead, our main protagonist loves to read and loves the knowledge of reading. So when she's offered a proposal by the lovely Prince Christopher, he agrees to let her read all she wants from the, from the archive that his family holds. And while she thinks, the princess thinks, that, the, that her and her so-called fiancé will have no genuine interest in romance whatsoever when she catches him talking to another princess. But, alas, she is misguided in her judgment when, as you watch each episode, they are gradually and genuinely getting to know each other better. And soon you realize that, you know, through their interactions with him and his staff and other members of the castle that she lives in that they gradually develop a romantic interest in each other and he learns to understand her more while she tries to realize that there's more to life than just reading when she gets to know her fiance just a little bit better than the rest. What I thought was a generally good way for both of them to progress in character-wise development which I thoroughly enjoyed a lot. Also I feel like a Mikabo Sohimi which is the child of a Japanese that we don't get enough of these shows. I feel like we have Soji and Josai characters with a very slow burn type of pacing to the story, which I love a lot. And for me, Chris and Ellie had the most adorable relationships that I've ever seen. The premise is straightforward. It's not really complicated. For like basically their like their daily lives and their struggle that they struggle to, you know, get close to each other, see a love blossoming and their bond goes stronger. And I thoroughly love that. And the fact that it's not like not overly complicated, not making me betrayal, which I love because I will love my girl and her fascinating book. And she learns a lot from what she reads. Like, even though she is deemed to read a lot, she takes what she learns and puts those into real life scenarios. You know, many people might not, you know, admire her appearance or knows her presence. She's a lot to say for herself when she is being serious about topics she is talking about or the people she's interacting with, which help benefit her and her fiance Chris. And seeing these two interact, like look at this lovely couple, they're so adorable, and I love them. And I can't wait to see if we get how really a season two. I can't wait to see them progress together soon as husband and wife instead of just fiancés. But I like how they work together. Like you know, they come to defend each other when need be in certain situations. But Wrapping up this review, my final thoughts on the Bible Princess. I want to say that English title right because I want to push it. I really like this slow burn type of building relationship between these two because they are adorable. I wish them the best of luck in the future. But as this anime has come to an end with this review, I certainly think you should give it a try. And I give this a 7.8 out of 10. And I can't wait to see if we do have season two in the near future. But if not, there was a perfect anime from start to finish to where it could just perfectly be wrapped up in one singular first season of an anime. And I can't wait to see if there's any more animes just like this where it's progressing in the real book form or maybe more of a book cafe east kind that hope in the near future that I can't wait to see develop more. And just watching a bookworm princess grow out of her shell and interact with the love of her life soon to be husband. I think that's a great way to top of a lovely, simple fairy tale in this anime. Definitely check it out if you haven't already and let me know what you think down in the comments below and I'll see you real soon. Till then, bye!